Welcome to this tutorial about the 6 updater 2.5. It is divided into four parts. Part 1, the layout of the 6 updater. Part 2, how to synchronize and download mods. And part 3, how to synchronize yourself with the server. And then finally in part 4, I will talk a little bit about some remarks and additional hints that might be useful for you when you use this program. Other than the updated program, you can see that it now has its own website. It's called 6updater.net and you can get all the information available on the 6updater or links to the information on this site as well as the download, of course. After you've downloaded the 6updater, you should have an icon on your desktop. It created one for you automatically. And on first launch, like I do now, it takes a little bit uh, to start up the program because it's initializing the databases and um, yeah on first launch some applications as you know take a little bit longer but on, on uh, the next launch and so on it should take less time and should be available to you even more quickly and um, also note that this is uh, not my actual machine it's a virtual box so it takes a little bit longer but after initializing, this is how the 6 updater looks now. As you can see, there's a new uh, tab in the middle. It says home page at the top, and this shows you the exact same home page you've just seen. So this is a portal for you to easily access the 6 updater website without having to memorize the address or anything else and getting the latest information that is available. Um, regarding the general layout, on the left side, as you can see here, we have an overview of all the mods that are in the currently selected preset and, of course, all the other presets that you have created. On a fresh installation, it looks like this. There's only three presets. The dynamic one, which has a special purpose. Then the Ace preset, which uh, automatically installs the Ace mod of the latest version for you. And the vanilla version of Armor 2. Okay. So, then there is uh, this uh, big button on the top left corner. This is what all the actions revolve around. So after you've chosen the preset and everything else, this is the button you would have to press. Either press on the green icon if the uh, preset um, action fits you, or click on the small button here in the drop-down menu to choose from all the available actions and uh, pick the one that is suitable for your needs. So, um, as you can see, you can convert pre-existing mods to the 6 updater as it uses a special format to update mods, install or update mods, create desktop shortcuts, or simply join a selected server, or just start the game without joining any server at all. And then there's some other actions which are important for you for specific reasons. I'm not going into those, because this is really stuff that, when you need to know it, you should read up on. But um, it's fairly simple, um, other than these uh, three main areas, there's not much you need to worry about. Um, in the middle section, as I said, there's the homepage tab, then there's a server browser. On first launch, this is empty, because even though the application synced with the 6 updater records to get the presets and uh, all that stuff, uh, you don't have a server list available to you yet, but you can easily fix that by just clicking on this button here with the drop-down arrow and then uh, selecting Sync Games by Servers. And what this does is it connects to the Games by Server and gets the, uh, well, Armor 2 game server list for you. As you can see, it's found 922 Armor 2 APC servers and it's updating the database now. And on the main layout, you can see this little progress bar here, which is new, hasn't been there in the last tutorial I made, which shows you the general progress of the action you choose or the uh, progress of the updater whenever it auto-synchronizes itself or whatever. But uh, as you can see now, the button has been grayed out before because an action was running, as was the data grid. It is not anymore and you are ready to use the updater again. And as you can see, I've got the server list now, uh, which has um, all these columns that you can, of course, click on to sort them uh, to suit your needs. And, um, well, for example, if you wanted to find the server with the highest player count, you would, of course, sort for player count. 
uh, to sort it in a descending order. And then you can easily see that the Warfare server right here has 44 players on it. And if you so choose, you could easily connect to it now. If it doesn't have a special requisites for mods, or that is, um, but uh, these things I'm gonna go into a little bit later in the tutorial. In the server browser you can filter, uh, so if you know a specific server name, for example Sixth Sense, you can just enter this here, press the return key and you see that it has filtered for the server that I was looking for. You can press the clear button to remove the filter. And then of course there's even more filters. You can uh, search for mission names, uh, maps, mods, and uh, what have you, everything you could imagine that is uh, stuff you would want to look for. The next tab is the mods tab. And what this does is it shows you all the mods that are available on A, the network, so the six network, which has official mirrors, and local mods if you have any of those installed. I do not have local mods installed, that's why this list is empty now. But if you have a mod that you have created yourself or is not available in the 6 updated network, you could easily select this here, click on add and would, it would be available to you in this list. So you could add it to a preset and uh, yeah, generally use it with this application. Um, you can sort this of course again, there's categories for the mods, so you can see which uh, is a sound mod, a vehicle mod, full conversion mods, etc. And um, if you right click on a mod, there's this uh, context menu where you can quickly add a mod to a preset, like right now I have the uh, Armor 2 OA preset selected, I could add this mod to the preset. I won't do that now because the standard presets, I don't think you should mess with those. But you can uh, always create a new preset and then add the uh, mods to those. So, um, by the way, the same is possible in the server browser. You could right click a server and it should show you context sensitive information. For example, you could create a preset with the server and uh, then you should have the server available to you without having to browse to it using the server browser. But instead of it, uh, of that, you have it in the context menu on the left and can easily connect to it and keep it in your favorites. But, of course, there's still a favorite button. You could uh, mark this and uh, yeah, select this server as a favorite. Uh, let me just quickly do that. Let me select the Six Sense server as I did before. Uh, Right-click it and select New Preset with Server. And then you see that you have a new preset, it says uh, six sends uh, the server name and it automatically adds all the mods that this server requires you to download. As you can see this one has quite an extensive list of mods and uh, well yeah, you can uh, now sync up with this server easily but as I said this is gonna be a topic later. Uh, next to the mods tab there's an applications tab, you could add your own applications here, for example uh, Fraps, if you wanted to start that application with Game Launch, you could add it here. And then there's, uh, because I have this server selected now, a custom repos tab, which shows you um, the information that is available while you have this preset selected, because this server uses a so-called custom repository. Uh, that means it has custom uh, mods and mod folders and multiplayer missions that you can easily download. But not every server has this, the server admin has to support this, um, so I would ask you to urge your game server admin if he uses mods to switch to the 6 updater, because this makes updating for all his clients and players fairly easy. Okay, so that's um, for the layout. I'm not gonna go any into any more detail about that. The next part is uh, about installing a mod. Uh, yeah, I forgot this before, so just a small addendum. Um, if you choose to download mods, then of course you don't always have to use the dynamic preset. You could, um, because this one, once you, once you close the applications, will always reset itself. So if you have a certain amount of mods that you want to start and launch with your game, and you don't want to look for them in the mods tab every time you uh, launch the updater or want to launch the game, then what you can do is select the presets tab and uh, where it says new preset you can just click this button and it will create a new preset for you and you can name that whatever you want so if you right click this and click rename preset 
You can just go ahead and name this um, my mods or whatever you want to call it. Click OK. And now if I go ahead and browse through the mod list, for example, I want to use um, the Ace mod. Uh, so I would just go ahead and add this to the preset. I want to use Ace X, so I want to add this to the preset. And maybe some sound mods like JSIS. Adding these to the presets uh, will do just that. And then if I go ahead and close the updater and restart them, all of these mods and the preset will still be available for me and I wouldn't have to choose uh, these mods every time I start the updater and just instead use my preset. Okay, welcome back. Um, this is the second part. It shows you how to install specific mods. Um, the process is fairly easy. You just uh, go ahead and select the mods tab in the main center area of the application. Scroll down to the selected server U. Ah, let me just clear this real quick. Let's, um, select the dynamic preset. Because I still have the preset selected I just created, That's, this filters the available mods to me, to those mods that are allowed by the specific server. So if you don't see every mod here, this is because the hidden filter and the allowed filter were checked and you might have uh, had a server selected in the server tab. Okay, so if I, for example, wanted to install the mod, uh, the acre mod, then I just go ahead and right click on the mod and select use mod in dynamic preset. And what this does is it adds the mod into the dynamic preset and note that it also adds all the dependencies for this mod so you don't have to worry about uh, will this mod work properly if I just add this? Because if I have just added the Acre mod, then uh, install it and load the game, nothing would work because you also need the JArmor Tulip and the CBA add-on. And in my specific case, the CBA underscore OA add-on because I only have Operation Arrowhead installed on this particular machine and not combined operations. But it figures this out automatically for you. As you can see, it has a small uh, D behind the mod, which uh, means that this is a dependency for another mod. So uh, yeah, fairly smart, I guess. And uh, after I've selected the mod I want to install, all I have to do is select the Run Updater drop-down button and select Install or Update. And what this does, it, it goes through all the mods I have selected in the dynamic preset, or rather the currently selected preset. And um, on first launch, it will also ask you for firewall permissions. You can allow access for this, uh, of course, because you want it to synchronize your mods. And, uh, well, yeah, you can see the progress in this window. If you click the mod, then you can even have more detailed progress reports. And if you control click on the mod again, it collapses it again. And, um, yeah, the progress bar shows you overall progress. And, uh, yeah, this is fairly quickly because I have selected smaller mods. Of course, if you select a large mod or have a slow internet connection, this can take a bit longer. And if you synchronize with a server such as this one, the Sixth Sense server, which has an extensive mod list, this can take a little while, but uh, it's very convenient. You don't have to search and select the mods and download and install them yourself. You can just tell the updater to do so for you and it will do all the work. Yeah, there we go. Um, and note now there's this confirmation checkbox and it tells you that certain mods or add-ons you have selected want to install um, additional files for them to work properly. Uh, the Acre mod, which is quite popular right now, is a mod that is compatible with TeamSpeak and it needs a TeamSpeak plugin as well as a um, DSound DLL in the main directory of the uh, of the Armor uh, game. So you can just go ahead and allow this one for it to automatically install these DLLs for you or you can choose to deny it the functionality and do it yourself. And also note that if you get annoyed by this um, constant query for um, if you want to, uh, it to install the DLLs for you. You can open the options tab here and you can see that it has auto start apps, auto process mod apps and auto process server apps and you can select if you do not want those things to happen by default, if you want it to happen every time uh, that uh, well the uh, progress requires it or if you want it to ask you every time for confirmation um, which means that you have this uh, rectangle symbol inside of it and uh, yeah, uh, customize your application to the way you want it. 
Also note that you could change the language here. There's a couple of languages available right now. This is um, subject to change. There should be more languages available in the progress of translating the application. And you can also select some other things for installing applications or mods. You can select the game path. It should detect it automatically. If it does, this should be left blank. Um, but of course, if you have a Steam installation and it has trouble detecting your game path, you could always click on the browse button and select the game path yourself. Then you can define a mod path where it should download all the mods. Uh, by default it downloads those to the game folder. If you don't want that, for example you have a solid state disk and are hard pressed for disk space, then you could go ahead and browse to a different location, which can even be uh, another partition, and have them download the mods uh, to any place you like, and it would still correctly load the game mods on the game start. The server mods tab is uh, again for custom repositories. There's this tool tab that you can read about uh, and what this means is every mod that is not on the official network, for example if you have a server that has a custom repository and they have a custom mod version or even a mod that is not on the uh, official network, it would download into a subfolder of your main game folder or mod folder if you set it. And by default this is the subfolder server mods and of course you can change this to whatever you like. And then the last option you can uh, select is the pack path. And uh, as I told you in the first part of this video, 6 data works by using rsync or zsync, uh, which is a fairly smart way to synchronize your mods. It will not download everything every time something changes, but it will only download the changes um, that are in the file. For example, if a file is 200 megabytes big and only one letter gets changed, which uh, is like nothing compared to the whole size of the file, 6 data won't download the whole 200 megabytes, but only the information that has actually changed, saving you a lot of time and uh, bandwidth. And um, if you wanted to save these uh, s uh, well, files that it uses to compare your current mod state to the one on the server, then you can select the pack path and the, um, well, yeah, place it somewhere else if you want to save disk space in your game folder. And, uh, well, yeah. <coughs> This is basically how you install specific mods with a 6 updater. If I now wanted to start the game with these uh, mods selected, then I would just go ahead and uh, select start game. It would start the game with these exact 4 mods as I've downloaded now. And uh, note that it won't load all the 5 mods because this one here has a black symbol next to it, which means that it's not compatible with my game version. As it says here uh, in the name, it's CBA underscore A2, so it's the version of CBA for Armor 2 only, which I don't run right now. And also note that the preset itself has uh, this uh, color next to it, so uh, this one is green now, which means that the whole preset is up to date. You can see that uh, the uh, mod for the Armor 2 OA Ace is not green, it is still yellow, but if I click it you can see that some of the mods are already green and these are the ones I downloaded in the dynamic preset, but three mods, Ace, Ace X and Ace X Sound mod are still not downloaded, they are marked blue, meaning that I don't have them yet. If you already have a mod installed like Ace, which you did not download through the 6 updater, but for example using Yoma add-on sync or you have a, a friend send it to you, this could be in the color brown, which would mean that you have the mod folder installed but it is not compatible with the 6 updater yet, meaning that there is no .rsync subfolder in the game folder path, but you could easily fix that and convert these folders to a version of the mod that is compatible with the 6 updater, again by using this button here and selecting the convert to 6 updater action. Well, so much for downloading and installing mods, and the next part will concern itself on how to synchronize your game with a certain server and connecting to it. Okay, welcome back. This is the third part. It is concerning itself with uh, how to actually use a 6 updater to synchronize yourself with a specific server. Right now I have this server list or uh, server browser open and I have uh, put in a filter for the specific server I want to connect to and it is the sixsense.eu game uh, server. In the previous uh, section of the video, the first part, I already showed you that you can right-click servers 
and um, select new preset with server to add a preset to your uh, preset list. I've already done this in the first part of the video. If you haven't done so with a specific server you want to use, then you can just go ahead and do this uh, by using this. For example, let me just go and do it. Um, United Operations also has a server which I know has a custom repository. Uh, this is the one. I just right click it and select new preset with server. And uh, as you can see, it added a new preset. And if I click it, you can also see that I have um, some of the mods already installed, which are CBA and CBA OA. Some mods are yellow, which means that I have synchronized with, the, with uh, a version of this mod, but it is not the one this server uses. It notices that and selects the mod as yellow, but if I click install or update, it would update the mod to the version this particular server needs. And uh, there's mods which are still marked blue, which means that I don't have these mods yet. So if I've selected a server, as you can see this one also has a custom repository as I would urge all server admins to create using the 6 updater because it makes stuff really really easy for your members. Um, this shows you the mods that the server has installed. There might be optional mods that are not in this list yet. As you can see, uh, I clicked on custom repo and on mods. There's also the mega sound pack, which does not appear on this list, which means that it is available in the repository but it is not enabled by default. Uh, but I could go ahead and right click the mod and select uh, add to preset and it would add this to the unitedoperations.net primary preset and also download this mod if I wanted to use it. Um, the same way I could select the mod and remove it from the preset if I don't want to have this anymore and don't want it to load with the game uh, and it's gone again. Note that you cannot remove required mods uh, so that means required by server, as it says in the tooltip. If I right-click on remove from preset with this one, select yes, then it would come up with an uh, error message down here and uh, it would still be in my preset list. So not all the mods can be removed, some of them are necessary for you to be able to play on the server. Also, what the custom repository allows you to do is to download multiplayer missions um, beforehand, this one does not have any multiplayer missions pre-shared, but if I click on the sixsense.eu server, um, this one has a lot of multiplayer missions which are already available for you to download. And what this means is that if you synchronize with this server and then connect to it, you don't have to wait in the lobby after you selected a slot and the new mission that you haven't played before loads for the server to send you this mission because you already have it downloaded and can just start playing the game. But again, back to the unitedoperations.net server with a uh, few uh, less mods. Um, it also shows you, by the way, the game server. And you can see there's 25 uh, people playing on it right now on the mission Blazing Raid 1.4. And um, as I'm not yet ready to play, I just go ahead and select the action Install Update. If it is already selected, I can just press the green button. And um, as before, with installing just simple mods or single mods, uh, the update pop updater progress window pops up and shows you what it's doing. This can take a little while, so uh, let me just get back to you after this has finished. Okay, quite some time and a big bowl of chocolate pudding later, the updater process has uh, finally finished. As I've said, this might take a little bit longer depending on how many mods the server has to offer and I, for some reason, have chosen an American server and uh, as I live in Europe, the updating process took a little bit longer as the connection isn't the best one in the world. Um, as before, it asked me for confirmation if I want to install the DLLs. This time um, I'm gonna press no again. As I've said, you could press yes um, and by the way, this will only uh, do something if the DLLs have actually changed during the process or uh, over time. But as you can see, the preset is now green, even though some of the mods, as uh, these three illustrate, have still got a black symbol next to them, meaning that they are not compatible with my game and will not be loaded with the game. But still I could connect to the server now. Um, so not having all of the mods uh, isn't a deal breaker, but if the server uses a mission where any of the units from these mods are used, um, then I wouldn't be able to see them and I wouldn't be able to enjoy the game 
hopefully, or might even break the mission for me or somebody else because uh, I couldn't take part in a critical point. Um, so you should make sure that all the required mods are actually downloaded to your game. Except of course for the variants of CBA, you only really need CBA and the one version that is compatible with your game and if you have combined operations installed then you only need CBA and neither of these two here. Um, so now that I've synchronized myself with the server, all I need to do is select the preset as I have here, as you can see it's uh, bold, and select the action join server. This server has a password protection. If I click join server, it should ask me for the password. But if I don't want to do that, I could just go ahead and click on the server browser. Um, scroll to the right with the server I've just selected. Uh, that's the one that is uh, being used. And add a password here. So if I double click this, then I could go ahead and enter the game password. And it wouldn't ask me for the password when I join the server. But even if it did, it would automatically save the password to this field here, so it would only ever ask you once, and only if the password changes would you need to go to this place and change it again. Okay, thank you for watching the third part, and um, now we are on to the final part with general remarks and, yeah, hints. Okay, welcome back. This is the part with the general remarks. And um, yeah, as I've explained to you, uh, you can install mods, servers, etc. And I've already shown you that you can select the options tab here and change the mod path and the server mods path. And these are general settings. And note that these settings only take effect for mods that you download after you've set these parameters. So everything that I have downloaded before I change this would still reside in the original folder and would not be moved automatically. And um, if I want to connect to a server, like the server in the presets down here, then you can see that there is also a field that says, uh, or is called server mods path, which is the same as uh, mods path, but only that I can uh, specify a folder myself and it wouldn't use the default location and I could also um, specify a different server mods path for every server that I want to do so for. So um, this way I could uh, organize all the mod folders in um, a less generic way so it wouldn't just be called server mods but for example I could name this server mods path something with United Operations, uh, this one with Sixth Sense, and I could easily identify the folders when I'm browsing through my game. So if you click on this one um, and double click it, then uh, you will be able, after a short time, because <laughs> my PC is really bogged down right now, um, to select a game folder path or general folder path, it doesn't even need to be in the game folder, where you want to store stuff for this particular server. Next up, I want to show you something uh, else. Um, the Game Profile tab in the top here, um, where you can uh, select game-specific or profile-specific settings. If I had started the game on this machine, you would be able to see and select the profile. If you have multiple profiles, you can choose the one you want to edit. And uh, for Game Launch, you might want to set some of these. For example, if you want to get rid of the splash screen that shows uh, when launching the game, you could set this checkbox here. Or, um, well of course, uh, CPU count and stuff like that, that you might be used to be able to set from other launches. You can also do this with the 6 update, of course. And, um, for example, a very important parameter I find is to select uh, world empty here so that if you start the game and don't join a specific server it doesn't go ahead and load the demo level uh, which takes quite a bit of time but goes directly and straight into the menu and you don't have to wait. And then there's additional parameters which give you even more possibilities um, but yeah if you need them I guess you know what they mean and I don't have to explain those to you. Also note that uh, if you update a mod um, let me simply uh, select a mod from the list. 
which is a little bit uh, smaller for example it doesn't really matter and, and note it also shows you the mod size so if I just go ahead and select this one in dynamic preset and then select the home tab and select install or update it automatically switches to the updated progress Note that um, after it is initialized the process it will say active 4. This means that not only does it download uh, the mod but it downloads four different files at once so it uses multi-threading for your downloads. So it's a little bit quicker than for example if you use Yoma which only downloads one file at a time. And uh, this saves quite a bit of time and it even goes higher than 4 on particular server setups. For example earlier when I was synchronizing to the United Operations servers it had eight active downloads at once, so um, yeah, depending on how fast your internet connection is, this can save you quite a bit of time and uh, get you going faster. Yeah, and other than that, I guess um, all you have to do is now download the 6 update, fire it up and learn to use it. I hope this helped you and um, if you encounter any bugs, feel free to browse to the homepage either using, using the homepage tab or going to 6updated.net in your real web browser and ask for feedback, support or even file bugs if you find any which you think uh, are not behaving the way it's intended to and um, yeah, I hope you won't get upset if something doesn't work the way you expect it or need some explaining because this still is pretty much work in progress so um, yeah, it's gonna update um, as you go and use it. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, it's uh, been quite lengthy I know, but I wanted to cover as much as possible so that you don't have to, uh, well, be left alone and figure this all out on yourself. Thank you.